Hi, here is Lucas, and in this video, I'm going to show you five of the most common mistakes when using Kotlin coroutines and how you can avoid them in your applications. So let's jump right into it. The examples in this video are taken from a GitHub repository that is called Kotlin Coroutine Use Cases on Android, which includes a lot of real world use cases for coroutines in Android applications. I will add a link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, the first mistake that a lot of developers make is to actually switch the dispatcher when they call a suspend function from a library like Retrofit or Room. This is not necessary. On my screen here, you can see the view model of the first use case of our example repository. This use case should simply perform a singing network request. So in the perform singing network request function, we launch a new coroutine on the view model scope. And in the coroutine itself, we perform a network request to the get recent Android versions endpoint. My example repository is using a mock API here in order to be able to mock different responses for certain endpoints. However, it is using retrofit and so it behaves just exactly like a real API. A lot of developers think that in order to not block the main thread here, we need to use with context and switch to the IO dispatcher. However, this is not necessary because in Kotlin coroutines, there's this convention called main safety. And this convention says that every suspend function should be safe to be called from the main thread. If the suspend function that we call needs to do something that would block the main thread, like performing a heavy computation, or like in our case here, perform a network request, the suspend function itself needs to make sure that this is done on a background thread. So it is not the responsibility of the caller of the suspend function to switch to a different dispatcher, but the responsibility of the suspend function itself. Of course, popular libraries like Retrofit and Room comply to the convention of main safety. So we can safely call the suspend functions that this library expose on the main thread. In your code base, you should also stick to the main safety convention and make sure that your suspend functions can safely be called from the main thread. So in our example here, we can safely remove the with context block again. Now, I have to admit that this mistake is not a big one. Your app will still work just fine if you have such unnecessary dispatcher switches in your application. However, besides that the code is not as efficient as it could be, it also makes the code harder to read because of unnecessary with context blocks. Let's now move on with mistake number two. Now here we have a suspend function that is called calculate factorial of, which well, calculates the factorial of a given number. And in the function body, we use with context to switch to the default dispatcher, which is fine because calculations should be performed with this kind of dispatcher. Afterwards, we declare a factorial variable, which is then multiplied with the loop counter in the for loop for every iteration to calculate the factorial. In the end, finally, the factorial result is returned. This function basically works fine, but it has a problem. Why? Well, let's first create a main function here. And in this main function, let's launch a new coroutine in which we call the calculate factorial of suspend function that I described before. If we run the app now, you can see that the correct factorial value is calculated. 
So what's the problem now? Well, the problem is that if we cancel the coroutine in which the calculation happens by cancelling its job, and afterwards print out that the calculation was cancelled afterwards, and also add a short delay to give the coroutine a chance to start, and then execute the main function. You can see that although the calculation should be cancelled now, the coroutine continues to run, finishes and prints out the result here. In Kotlin coroutines terminology, we say that this suspend function is not cooperative regarding cancellation. And this will lead to wasted device resources and potential memory leaks. But what's the reason why the suspend function is not cancelled? The problem with our suspend function here is that it can only stop its execution at so-called suspension points. Suspension points are, for example, calls to suspension functions of the Kotlin standard library, like delay or with context. These functions will immediately throw a cancellation exception when the coroutine in which they are called are cancelled. So a suspension point would cancel the coroutine in which this calculation is performed. But since we don't call such a function here, we have to do this now. So in the for loop here, we could either call ensure active or yield. If we open up the documentation of ensure active, you can see that it ensures that the current scope is active. And if the job is no longer active, it throws a cancellation exception. So let's remove the call to yield and execute this program again. And as you can see, the calculation is now really cancelled because now the result is not printed. Nice. Another possibility to make our function cooperative regarding cancellation here is to simply check if the job of the coroutine is still active. We therefore can use the isActive property of the scope of the coroutine. Is active is sometimes useful because then we can do some cleanup work in the else branch if we have to. Kotlin coroutines claim that we can write asynchronous and concurring code in a conventional code style. And yeah, that is mostly true. However, there's one area where that's not really the case and where coroutines are not really that intuitive. And this area is exception handling. So let's now have a look at mistake number three. So here I also prepare the main function and in the main function we launch a new coroutine and in this coroutine we just throw an exception. Since Kotlin coroutines promise us that we can use conventional coding constructs, we simply use a try-catch and try to handle the exception. However, when running this program, you can see that the exception is not handled by the catch block, but instead the exception crashes here. And this is strange. On the other hand, it should become clear why that's the case if we take a look at the print statement that we have here. You can see that the control flow in the main function already reaches our print statement and only afterwards the app crashes. This is because our launch coroutine is started after the main function executes the print command. If our try catch block would actually catch the exception, then the control flow would jump from the end of the main function to the beginning of the catch block, and that wouldn't actually make sense. So in order to handle the exception properly, the first thing that we can do 
is to move the dry catch into the coroutine itself. And when we run the app again, the exception is handled and the app doesn't crash anymore. Another possibility to handle the exception would be to declare a coroutine exception handler. This exception handler now needs to be installed. And so we can simply pass it to the launch coroutine builder, right? This way, we should also handle the exception, right? So let's run this code again. Oh wait, why does it crash again now? This brings us to mistake number four. Mistake number four is to install a coroutine exception handler in a child coroutine. The problem here is that an exception handler that is installed in a child coroutine has no effect. What we need to do instead is to create a new coroutine scope and install the coroutine exception handler there. We now have to launch the coroutine in this scope and then call join on it in order to wait for the coroutine to complete. And when we run this code now again, you can see that the exception is now handled. The last mistake, mistake number five, is about accidentally catching cancellation exceptions. And this is a mistake that I myself also constantly make because I tend to forget about cancellation exceptions. So let's have a look at our example here. Again, we have a simple main function in which we launch a new coroutine. The call to delay here for 100 milliseconds represents a network request. And at the end of the coroutine, we print out that the coroutine is still running. In our main function, we also then delay for 500 milliseconds and then at the, in the end, we cancel the job. This should simulate that the coroutine is canceled while the network request is still in flight. And if we run the main function, Nothing surprising happens. The coroutine is cancelled and this print statement here with the text coroutine still running is not printed out. Let's now extend this example a little bit and add some exception handling for our network request here. So let's simply surround the delay which represents the network request with a try catch block. And in the catch block, we simply handle the exception. When we now run the main function again, you can see that we now introduced a severe bug because the coroutine is now not cancelled anymore, but it continues to run. You can see this because this print statement here is executed and printed out here. So indeed the coroutine doesn't stop its execution. And this is problematic because now we are wasting a lot of valuable device resources by needlessly executing code. In some cases, this can even lead to app crashes. But why does the coroutine continue to run here? Earlier in this video, when we talked about cancellation, I said that suspending functions like delay will immediately throw a cancellation exception when the coroutine in which it is called got cancelled. And that's exactly the case here. This call to delay throws a cancellation exception. But we catch this exception in our catch block here. And so the coroutine continues to run. To fix this issue, we could either only catch HTTP exceptions like this or catch all exceptions but rethrow cancellation exceptions.
if we now run the main function again, you can see that by rethrowing the cancellation exception, the coroutine is stopped and no more code within the coroutine is executed. So these were five of the most common mistakes when using Kotlin coroutines. I hope you found this video useful and you can avoid these mistakes in your own apps. If you want to learn more about coroutines, you can check out my full premium course. It is almost 10 hours long and covers every topic around coroutines. I will add a link in the description if you're interested. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel to never miss a video in the future. So take care and see you soon.